In today's Warzone 2 Tips and Tricks video, I want to show you guys how you can easily win more solos so you can finally leave your bedroom and tell your parents that you've got that win so they don't think you're as much of a disappointment anymore. Now, today's video isn't going to be just a straightforward cookie cutter imprint of how to win every single game like you see a lot on YouTube. Instead, I want to break it down into three stages, the early game, the mid game, and the late game, and give you valuable tips and tactics that you can use in every game, no matter where you land or what you do. So with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Now, the early game, this is going to make or break any game in Warzone and to be honest if you die in the first few seconds and get sent straight to the gulag nine times out of ten I would suggest that you just quit and restart. Getting a good start in this game is paramount especially when you consider that things like cash are very very scarce so if you come back from the gulag late chances are you're going to spend the rest of the match playing catch up and you're going to put yourself in a very bad situation. What I'm going to suggest you do is scrap the contracts. Don't go to the contracts because a lot of people will be doing this especially the intel contracts and the safe crack contract. I know I said in my previous solos guide that you should be going for the safe crackers. however that was a few weeks ago and at that point not a lot of people were going for these. However every single game these are going to be rammed and they're going to put you in a very hard situation if you do not win that first engagement. So instead I'm going to give you two options where I think you should land that are going to give you incredible positioning and a lot of loot. Now the first one is going to be the police station here and also I'm going to suggest that you go to the bank. Now do bear in mind that depending on where the flight path of the plane is headed one or even both of these might not be the best place to go. For example, if you're going straight over bank and there's a contract there, it's probably a good idea not to drop there because there's going to be a lot of other people. Obviously, if you want to get into a fight, then do that early game. But if you're trying to win, which is what this video is about, then making sure that you are looted and you have everything you need is going to be your priority. What I also look for when I'm trying to land is that there is a vehicle nearby. This is why I love dropping at bank because you can get a lot of cash very, very easily. And if only one other person lands there, a lot of the time, then you'll be able to avoid that fight, get a little bit of loot and then go straight for the Hummer underneath high rise. And then at this point, what you want to do is drive to a buy station that seems like it's pretty out of the way. By now, you should have at least 5,000. And what I'm going to tell you to do is straight up just buy the Fennec. Doesn't matter what your primary is. Doesn't matter where the circle's going to end. The best thing that you can have in your pocket at this stage in the game is going to be the Fennec because it will absolutely delete people. To summarize, you just want to get in, get looted, get cash, get the Fennec, and then stay in a car. And then you're in the mid game. Now, the mid game, the biggest enemy that you're going to have is going to be yourself or your lack of patience. I can't count the amount of times I've got to like the top 70, the top 50, and then I see someone and they run into a building and then I decide to push that building where they're holding an angle and I get sent to the gulag and I smash my fucking fist onto my desk and scream, why the fuck do I even bother? If you have a vehicle and you have a fast fire rate SMG, there is no reason why you should be pushing into buildings. You just need to stay patient and then what I suggest you should do is just go from petrol station to petrol station or gas station for you guys over the pond that way you'll be able to get even more loot but also you'll be making sure that your vehicle is staying topped up on fuel now at this point what i would suggest is depending on where the circle is you want to stick to driving around in open areas you really want to avoid any built up areas with high buildings people will love to just hide up on these buildings with an lmg or a few drill charges and they could take you out pretty easily instead what you need to be doing is driving around on sort of like the northeast side of the map or the south of the map where there are less buildings now on top of this you you also want to make sure that you're sort of just outside of the circle. If you're just outside of the circle, as you patrol around, you're never going to get caught in the gas because you're in a vehicle, so you'll always be able to make it inside the gas. But also what you'll do is catch people running and you'll catch them off guard. This is where you'll be able to employ the tactic that I like to call the car jump. If you didn't watch my last video where I gave you this tip, I'll go over it briefly again. Basically in Warzone 1 and Warzone 2, if you jump out of a vehicle whilst it's moving, you will not take any damage and you will stop dead still. Where whereas the car will continue on at its full momentum. If you drive past an enemy, the car will whiz past them and you can jump out whilst they're still shooting at the car, giving you a free easy kill. This is how I get my armor satchel, how I get extra ammo. This is basically how I set myself up for the end game whilst playing solos because it is so super easy to get the drop on these players and you can take them out with ease if you followed my earlier tip and have the Fennec in your back pocket. And this is basically gonna conclude my tips for the mid game. The mid game is all about just driving around staying patient and only taking easy fights. Obviously, if you want to go for high kill games, then do it that way. But if you're serious about winning a solo game, the mid game is where most of the frustration is going to happen because there are going to be people spread around absolutely everywhere and the little rat bastards just like to hide in the most bizarre places. But by staying in a car, you're going to be avoiding these people and you're going to be able to get yourself to that very important end game. So here we find ourselves in the end game and you have outlived like 110 other people. There's only 40 people left, 30 people left. Either way, 
way, the circle is now considerably smaller and it's time that you ditch your vehicle. What you want to do is scout out the circle in your map whilst you're driving around and then try and find what you believe is going to be the highest point available. In the end game, positioning is literally everything. I've seen people win with just a gulag pistol and a riot shield in the end game because they had positioning. It doesn't matter if you've got the top meta loadout, it doesn't matter if you've got all the perks, if you have shit positioning, you're going to get shit on bird. So what I would suggest that you do is ditch the car and then make your way to the high point and then you wait and you be patient again. The thing is, even if you see someone running in the open that you could easily take out, chances are it's not going to be the best idea. Yes, that guy will have to die at some point, but that doesn't mean that you have to give your position away. And nine times out of 10, you'll be able to let most of the other people remaining kill themselves. I wanted to show you guys this little clip where I actually win a solo. I used all of the tips in this video to get me to the end game here and I'm currently led down just trying to hold the last bit of high ground that I have available. I do not want to be down in those buildings because then it is a lot easier for someone to creep up behind me with no footstep audio. At least here I have the storm to my back so that I know that I'm completely safe apart from all of this area I have in front of me. I see this guy here so I pepper him with a few bullets so I know that he is forced to be able to plate. This means that I'm able to run with the zone and get the next bit of high ground that is left. I see this guy's sniper glint, but I decide that the best course of action is to just continue on. I put a few shots into him and then thankfully he dies. This allows me to get to this building and then I'm going to use the ladder to get on top of it so that I maintain the high ground. This high ground is the last piece available in this zone and I know that I have to hold it and I know that I'm going to have to dispatch of this guy quickly otherwise I'm going to get caught in the gas. I cannot see him so that means that he has got some sort of gas mask or stim and this is why he is able to stay in the gas. So I decide to jump off of this building, but because of the gas mask animation, I'm unable to pull my chute. This is a shame, but it does allow me to get up onto this higher ground anyway. I'm in the zone, but I'm not too worried about it because I know that I have a gas mask. I see this guy who's also in the zone. He has no choice but to keep running, otherwise he is going to die from the gas and I'm able to dispatch of him quickly and get the victory. And there we have it, my Warzone 2 solos guide for how to get easy wins. I really hope that some of you guys found this useful. Now for those of you who don't know, I am currently engaged in a ridiculous slap bet with my brother-in-law, whereby if I do not hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, he is going to slap me hard in my face. So if you could just spare that half a millisecond it takes to slap that subscribe button, me and my face will be eternally grateful. And in return, I promise to give you guys the best Warzone 2 tips and tricks videos possible, as well as uploading the result of the slap bet on New Year's Day. Now, for those of you who have watched my videos for a while, you'll know that I love to see who sticks around until the end. So if you're still here, I'd like you to let me know by answering this question question down in the comments. Would you rather have 20 squad wins or five solo wins? Anyway, that's it from me today. I'm Average O. Peace.